Hello, my name's Eleanor and I'm the Education Manager at Benjamin Franklin House. Welcome to this week's Life Science class. Um, this week we're really lucky because we're going to be welcoming Amy Todd, who is the Community and Learning Manager at Newington Green Meeting House, which is one of our um, heritage friends in London. And she's going to be telling us all about the scientist Joseph Priestley, who was a good friend of Ben Franklin's, and um, about some of his experiments and then doing a demo with us as well. Um, just a, a few housekeeping things before, before I hand over to Amy. So we're really looking forward to you participating in the class. Um, if you're watching this live, there are two ways you can do that. You can um, use, either use your raise hand button, and to see this, you need to either click your mouse or tap your screen, and then you should see um, a banner of icons and one with a hand, and if you tap that, then I can unmute your microphone and you can ask Amy your question. The second way is to use your Q&A button, which um, again, if you, if you click your mouse or tap your screen, it's the button that has the two speech bubbles. And if you click that, then you can type your answer or your question and I can read it out to Amy. So um, thank you so much again, Amy, for joining us. And I'm going to hand over to you now. Hello, everyone. Um, so I'm Amy and I work at Newington Green Meeting House. And that's the building that you can see in the bottom corner of the screen there. It's called Newington Green Chapel there. It's had a few different names. And it's sort of like a church, but it might be a bit different to a kind of a church or a synagogue that you might have been to before, for example, because you don't have to all believe that one thing. The people that met at this um, meeting house or chapel tended to, to, to believe lots of different things, but they were kind of still the same religion, but you just don't have to to believe that all the same things so lots of different thoughts some people believe in God some people don't believe in God some people have lots of different ideas but they're okay they're quite unique in that sense so today we're going to be um, learning a, this instant freeze magic trick and I thought this was a really cool thing that we could do today because it, it really helps with everything that you learn at school with science and um, you can learn a bit about the meeting house and who went there including Benjamin Franklin and then you get to try a cool trick that you can show your friends too. And at the end of the science experiment, you get a really nice slushy that you get a treat on this hot day. Hot if you're in London anyway. So that will be nice. So um, some quick things about the Meeting House, which is where I work. Um, the Meeting House is halfway between Hackney and Islington in London. It's not too far away from Benjamin Franklin House, if you might have been there before. And it was a place where for over 300 years, the building's quite an old building, people have always um, thought a bit differently. So it started off that people started to, to live in that area because they didn't agree with the government and the decisions they were making. Then people started to live there when their religion was a bit different from the religion that the country said you had to be. So you had to be Church of England and lots of other religions were around and they started to congregate around this area because people were a bit more accepting of the fact that they, they thought a bit differently. So it's always been a place where people have thought differently, they've challenged things, they've wanted to make the world a fairer place. Um, one of the people um, that you can see here is, is Joseph Priestley. So he used to come to Newington Green, where the meeting house is. He used to come to the meeting house. He was good friends with Benjamin Franklin and good friends with the minister at the meeting house, who was a, a man called Richard Price. And all of these people, including Franklin and Price and Priestley, they were interested in science, they were interested in religion, and they were interested in politics and how the world works and trying to make it a better place. Um, so even though Joseph Priestley was a minister, a religious minister, um, he thought that science and religion could work together. So a lot of people talk about people that when they started thinking about science, then they stopped believing in God because they believed that they were separate. But actually Priestley thought that God explains a lot about what happens in science and science explains a lot about what happens with God and that he used to use them together. And um, that's what Joseph Priestley is known for, being a scientist, but also being a religious person. But he discovered lots of things by accident. So he discovered oxygen by accident. He discovered fizzy drinks by accident and all sorts of different things like this. He was a very curious man. He liked doing lots of different experiments like Benjamin Franklin. Um, and actually, the only reason he got involved in science was because of Benjamin Franklin. He met Benjamin Franklin in London, 
and he knew that Benjamin Franklin was really interested in experiments to do with electricity. And so he, he met him and he started reading up on some of the things that he'd done. And then he got really interested and he started experimenting too. So it's all thanks to Franklin that we're doing this experiment today, really. So um, how will what we're going to do today help you when it comes to school and science? So um, the things we're going to be talking about is how matter can change state when it's heated or cooled. So what happens to things like a liquid when it's frozen, because that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, we're going to compare um, different types of solids, liquids, gases. What are their properties? And we're going to understand what happens when things change state. So today we're going to be looking at water and then we're going to be freezing water. And so we're going to see what happens, what changes the material goes through. And is that permanent? Is that forever? How do you reverse it? How do you make it go back to being liquid water? So before we go any further, there's going to be some words that we're going to be talking about and I just want to check that everyone knows these words. You probably already know some of these words already, but there might be a few that you uh, might be a bit new. And what I'm going to ask is that throughout this, if you're asking questions or you're telling me things that you know about this, I want you to make sure you're using the correct words so we're proper scientists today. So the first word is matter. Um, Eleanor, do you want to maybe um, choose someone to ask if they know what this word means? Absolutely. So we've got a raised hand from Irene. So I'm going to um, uh, let Irene answer that. Hi, Irene. Hi. Um, matter is, well, you have three states of matter. You can have solid, you can have liquid, and you can have gas um and so matter is the how what form water is in um well usually it's water it doesn't have to be so solid is usually when it's frozen liquid is when it's just neutral not um not frozen and not heated and gas is when it's heated and it's condensating Okay, so, so it's the different types of physical things, isn't it? You're exactly right there. And so if we're going to be focusing on liquid today. Irene, do you want to tell us um, about liquid? What makes liquid different to a gas or a solid? Um, so liquid is usually the way you find it. It is... So yeah, go on. What does it look like? um it's it's shapeless it um can take it can take shapes but usually generally it's shapeless perfect yeah so when you put it in a container that's a shape it will take that shape won't it yeah that's, that's perfect thank you irene that's really helpful and then we've got um molecule so, um, Ellen, shall we find someone who might know what a molecule is? Absolutely. We have another raised hand. Oh, a few raised hands. I'm going to go to Jack, um, to Zach and Louis now for this one. Uh, a molecule is what's it called? Yeah, it's like a bunch of atoms that are connected. Yeah. And so what, um, so molecules, like you said, they're kind of building blocks of, of things, aren't they? It's what things are kind of made out of. Do you agree? Yeah. So, um, so what, what, um, what are we going to be um, talking about today that would include a molecule? Well, H2O is a molecule. Okay, great. And, and for those who might not know, what's the other name for H2O? Water. Great, so water's full of molecules, isn't it? And we're gonna be looking at what those molecules do and how they behave. Perfect, thank you for that. Um, next one, we've got state. And I think that Irene kind of covered state for us a bit. So state is like liquid or a gas or a solid. So, um, and sometimes some matter can change state, can't it? So today we're gonna to be looking at water and that can change state and it can become a solid. 
and then it can go back to being a liquid and it can also become a gas as well. So we're going to be, that's what we're talking about today when things change, stay. Now, freeze, I think we all probably know what um, freeze means, but I'm interested to know if anyone here knows what happens to water when it freezes. Um, maybe, we, Eleanor, we can find someone who might answer that one for us. Absolutely. So I'm going to um, call on Jessica to answer that one. Um, freeze is when all the molecules inside of the water start just freezing together because they're starting to stick together and because they're in something really cold and they have to stick together to stay warm. I think that is a great way of explaining it, them all sticking together. And um, yeah, because like you said, they get cold, don't they? When they get cold, they start slowing down. When they start slowing down, they start connecting together and that's what makes them solid as opposed to being a liquid, isn't it? That's great, Jessica. Thanks so much. That's a great explanation. Um, then we've got hypercooled. Now I'm going to explain this one because this might be a new word for today. And hypercooled means when something is really close to freezing. So the fizzy drinks that we've got, that I've got, and that hopefully you have too, but if you don't have them now, you can always do this another time. Um, these liquids we've got are so close to freezing, we call them hypercooled. And what we're going to do is we're going to show you how you turn something from hypercooled to freezing really quickly. And that's going to be the, the cool magic trick, the instant freeze magic trick. Now, we already kind of covered this earlier because Irene was telling us a bit about liquids and how liquids take the shape of a container. And it's the same with gas. There's no fix, they, they're, they are shapeless on their own. You need to put them in something with a shape. So when you, um, you know, are like this is with a liquid, if you pour water into a bottle, it takes the shape of the bottle and it's the same with gas too. And then our last word is um, carbonated. Now I wonder if anyone knows this word carbonated and if they might have used it before if they know of anything that's carbonated do you um shall we ask someone eleanor yes so I, i'm going to go back to um zach and louis you are a fizzy drinks carbonated great that's great and can you read out on the screen what carbonated um what it says next to carbonated there for me contains dissolved carbon dioxide Right, so carbonated is when carbon dioxide gas meets with the liquid and it gets combined and that's what makes the fizzy drink. What's your favourite fizzy drink? Louis? Cream soda. Say that again? Cream soda. Oh, I don't know that one. What's it taste like? Uh, I think it's only in Hong Kong. Oh, that sounds cool. I'd like to try that one though. Is it like fruity flavoured? Sweet and creamy, really. Ooh, sounds great. Great. Right. Well, um, thank you for that. So we're going to carry on. So um, Joseph Priestley did lots of experiments and he did lots of experiments with gas at first. And um, this is how he discovered fizzy drinks by accident. Um, because he was in a brewery, and a brewery is where you make beer, and a lot of beer is carbonated. So a lot of beer is fizzy. And um, he was in this atmosphere with lots of gas, and he, he noticed that the water that he was experimenting with started to become carbonated. And that's how he discovered fizzy drinks by accident. And he thought that at the time, fizzy drinks could cure scurvy. So scurvy um, was a disease that we now know is, is, when, is what you get when you um, are lacking in vitamins. So especially vitamin C. So you get vitamin C from potatoes, from carrots, from oranges. And nowadays, most of us have a lot of vitamin C because we know that eating vegetables and fruit is important. But in those times, they didn't know where scurvy came from. 
and Joseph Priestley thought that maybe this fizzy drink that he'd accidentally invented might cure scurvy. And that's because carbon dioxide is known to preserve things. So it gets used a lot nowadays in terms of food, so maybe bread and things like that to stop them going off, to stop them going mouldy. And he thought because of that, maybe if he put it in water, it would stop people from decaying because when you've got scurvy, you get poorly. So he thought maybe that would help. And that was really important at the time because a lot of people at the time were getting scurvy because they were traveling on boats. So people going to America, people going across the world, sailors and things like this, they were getting scurvy and they didn't realize it was because they weren't eating fruit. And um, so he thought, oh, I've discovered this by accident, but brilliant, it'll, it'll cure scurvy. Unfortunately, it didn't. But you can see here in the picture, this is how he created those fizzy drinks. So he'd get the gas in a bag there and he'd put it in the water and then eventually the gas would travel into the liquid. So now I need a vote. So now we're going to decide whether we do the experiment first and then we talk about how, um, how it works. So the science behind the experiment or we can work out the science behind the experiment first and then do the experiment afterwards. So it's up to you. So I'm going to let you decide. Eleanor's going to tell me what you decide. Um, and then we will go from there. OK, so to vote for, um, if you'd like to see the demonstration first, would you like to just press your raise hand button? And then we can see how many people would prefer that. I'll just give it a moment in case people are finding the button. Okay, so we had um, five out of eight voting to see the demonstration first, so we'll, <laughs> we'll go with that first. Okay, great. So I'm just going to stop sharing my screen a second. Okay, so because the experiment is using things in the freezer, I just need to go to my freezer to get the drink. So if you're, if you're going to be doing this demonstration alongside of me, now's the time to go and get the drinks that you've put in the freezer. But what I'm gonna say is when you get them out of the freezer, you need to be really careful. So if you're gonna do this at another point in the future, when you lift them out of the freezer, you have to try and not move them at all. So I'm just gonna go and get that and I'll be back in one second. Okay, and while we're waiting um, for the fizzy drinks, if anyone has any questions um, if they wanted to ask in the Q&A or, or with their raised hands. And as Amy explained, um, maybe you have the fizzy drinks ready, but don't worry if you don't, she's going to explain exactly what you need to do to try the demonstration a bit later, because it does involve having put the fizzy drinks in the freezer for a little bit before doing the demo. Okay, everyone. so I've got a towel down. Um, Amy, we've got one raised hand. Is it okay if I just, um, they can ask that question and then, brilliant. Hi, Aram, did you have a question? Well, I saw what the question was in the chat. So what do we need? Um, so, so please feel free around to, to speak if I forget something, but what I think you need is, and I'd say a towel, just in case it, in the experiment, if it doesn't work and sometimes um, it stays liquid, then it can get a bit messy. Um, I, what I'm going to do is I've put a metal bowl in the freezer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour the liquid onto the metal bowl and I'll explain that in a minute, but a metal bowl that's cold you can use too and that's it really in fact i forgot a glass so my assistant is going to get a glass for me aren't you oliver i think he's got his headphones in i'm going to go get a glass as well because what i'm going to do is i'll pour it in and then you can see and then also i get to drink the slushy afterwards so that's important so give me one second i'll go and get a glass Right, 
so that's everything that you need really so um what i've done is these drinks have been in the fridge in the freezer for three and a quarter hours because that's what i've been told is the the best amount of time so they're hyper cooled which is the word that we used earlier so they're just about to freeze and what happens is you take it out of the freezer you can see it's still liquid yeah you can see that moving still liquid and what we're going to do is really gently open it and we're going to release a little bit of the air now when we release this air it might be that you see some ice crystals start forming at the top so i'm opening it up letting releasing some of that air now we'll see if this works now what you need to do is tip it up quite quickly and you might see i've got some ice crystals forming at the top and then let's see if i pour it in if you might see that it's turned into a slushy let's have a look oh no this one didn't work this one's still liquid okay let me try with my coca-cola let's see if this one works if this doesn't work me and eleanor did this yesterday and it did work so we've got a video to show you if this doesn't work um because you know i'm sure you all know because you're quite um used to science experiments by this point but there's so many different variables so many different things that differ when it comes to science experiments sometimes it might be that i put this in the freezer for one minute too long and that's why it's not going to work so let me try again with this one so i'm going to open it up let some of the air escape oh this one's working i don't know if you can see that but you've got some crystals forming at the top can you see at right at the top so the ice crystals are forming and what i'm going to do to just to make them form quicker is i'm going to turn it round like this oh and now it's solid let me try and if i pour this on here you can see that i have a nice oh, i can't really show you that it's a nice slushy oh now it's coming out of the top there can you see that so it's a bit like snow because when ice crystals um form in a carbonated drink can you see that it's a bit different um it's more like snow than it is like ice because it's because of the gas in the water it makes it freeze in a different way oh can you see that oh that's going to be great i can have that later so hopefully if you were joining in that worked for you too and now i said i would show you a bit about the science behind it so how does that work so i'll put my powerpoint back on again One second. So now we've done the experiment and it worked. Yay. Um, I was just going to explain to you this. There's, there's a few different ways you can make the ice crystals form in that way where it will instantly freeze. You can do what I did, which was turn it upside down really quickly and then you can see it's frozen but if you pour it into a glass then you can see it's like a proper slushy and then you get to enjoy it um or what you could do is if you pour it really gently in onto a cold bowl or a, a metal lid like what i use that way because the cold bowl is cold it makes it instantly freeze so then that's quite cool because you can watch it freeze instantly on a plate like that or what you can do is pour it into a normal bowl a bowl that's not cold and if you put some ice within the bowl then it will all instantly freeze too so there's a few different ways of doing it but how does it work why is it that the in, that it instantly freezes like that so the reason why is because when we look at temperature temperature is actually I'm just going to clean up while I explain here. Temperature actually measures the movements between the molecules. So it's a bit like when Jessica was telling us earlier 
about temperature is whether things are hot or cold, but actually what temperature means is how much the molecules are moving around. So when, the, when it's very slow, um, we know that the molecules are cold and that's when they slow down. And when they get so slow, they slow down completely, that's freezing point. Um, and so I'm sure a lot of you already know that freezing point in water, in H2O, um, that's zero degrees. So when it's quite cold outside, that's when the puddles start freezing and things like that, because that's when the molecules in water have completely slowed down and they, they're not moving anymore at all. And usually when it freezes, they, they make quite ordered patterns, a bit like Jessica was saying, they, they start attaching themselves to other ones. And it's usually in kind of straight lines, quite organized patterns. That's hey, why- Amy, oh, sorry, we have, we have a raised hand again. Is that okay if, from Jessica? Yes, of course. Yes, yeah, of course. She can ask her question. What does it mean when it says spectacular? crystallization or instant freeze oh that's a good question so spectacular crystallization is what joseph Priestley called it but i call it instant freeze so it's a different name for the same thing but that's kind of the scientific way of explaining happen so crystallization is the ice crystals that form in the drink and spectacular crystallization is just a fancy way really of saying wow it instantly freezes and it looks spectacular thanks jessica great question i forgot to explain that one um yes and so priestley was experimenting with the gas remember he found carbonated water by accident it was an accident that he discovered it and then he thought oh maybe i'll try freezing it and see what happens because we all know when we freeze ice, it forms like a solid block, like an ice cube. But when he freezed carbonated water, he noticed that it didn't really freeze like that. It kind of looked a bit more like snow, which is hopefully what your slushies look like. Um, so the liquid that you are using, the, the soft drink, is hypercooled. It already wants to freeze. It's really close to freezing. And you can't see them, but little ice crystals are starting to be created in the bottle. Now, ice crystals, if you left it, they would start at the top and they would slowly work their way in a really ordered line all the way down to the bottom. And then what it would do is it would take the shape of the bottle of Coca-Cola that we've got here because it's liquid. So it takes the shape of the container. It would slowly, slowly, all the ice crystals would would. Um, go down in an order but what we're doing by shaking it around it's just helping it a little bit what we're doing is that that movement or of giving it a cold surface like a cold metal bulb it just starts the process of crystallization really quickly and it doesn't have time for, for it to be ordered it just has to do it really quickly and that's why it instant freezes and the, the ice crystals have to oh, the ice crystals have to join really quickly together so that's the end of the experiment and my explanation, but I'd be really interested to know if you, if you have any questions about the experiment. We have a couple of raised hands. So um, first I'll go back to um, Zach and Louis. Does it need to be a fizzy drink? Because I don't have any fizzy drinks at home. It does need to be a fizzy drink, yes, because you need the the gas in the in the drink, the carbonated water, for it to work. Otherwise, it will just freeze as a normal solid. But you can use, if you don't have a bottle, you can use canned fizzy drinks too. So maybe next time you go to the shop, try and get a fizzy drink to make it work. Okay, and another question from Jessica, and, and do feel free to ask questions in the um, Q&A as well, if you have any. Oh, no, we have, oh, yes, Jessica, here we go. Um, can, is there a different kind of fizzy drinks that will work, just not Coca-Cola? 
Yeah, great question. You can use any type of fizzy drink. I, I did some reading up and you can use any type of drink. The one I used first was called Iron Brew, which um, I don't know if you get in the States, Jessica, but it's a Scottish um, drink. It's more popular than Coca-Cola in Scotland, actually. But yeah, you can use any, you can use any carbonated drink at all. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Did you have another question? Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. Oh, I think Jessica's hand, oh no, it's all great. Okay, thank you so much everyone who asked questions. Um, and yeah, I'll hand back over to Amy. Great. Well, that was um, the end of the experiment. Um, my last thing just to say is that um, the Newington Green Meeting House where I work, that's the project that, that I work on. And we've got some things that we're doing over the summer holidays, if anyone would like to join us. So um, there was a lady called Mary Wollstonecraft, who's the lady in that picture there. And she was um, basically one of the first women to say that all girls should, have, um, should go to school the same as boys, and that women should be able to vote and be, um, you know, be politicians as well, and things like that. And um, we do a lot of work around her to help tell people who, who she was and why, it's, why she's important. And um, what we're gonna be doing through the summer holidays is we're going to be looking at Walston craftivism. So craft, um, which you might do already, um, which is a bit like art, you know, it might be you um, sew or it might be that you cook or it might be all these kinds of things. And we're gonna be looking at ways that you can do craft but also you can help support causes. So one week we're gonna be looking at the environment, which I'm sure is something that you're all really concerned of and you, and you want to um, make the world a bit greener. And we're gonna be looking at the ways we can do craft and art to help the environment. So it might be that we um, create a banner or something explaining to people um, why helping the environment is important, for example. And one week we're going to be looking at something else. So the next week we might be looking at um, um, we might be looking at something like um, Black Lives Matter, for example, or something like that, and about what we can do art or craft wise to help with that cause. So it's going to be every week, and there'll be a task, some kind of craft that you have to do, and we'll explain to you how you do it, and you'll meet someone who already does that kind of work, so that you can learn a bit more about. Um, but the information is on is on that screen there and, and on our website that Eleanor can share with you. Thank you so much, Amy, and um, everyone who, who's still with us. I did share the link to um, the Newington Green Meeting House website to their learning page. If you'd like to find out more about the, those summer projects. Um, and thanks again to Amy for joining us for that wonderful demonstration um, and to everyone for joining us. Next week, we have another visitor, um, our colleague at um, Museum of Methodism and John Wesley's house, uh, who's going to be doing some more science with us. And um, we'll hope you'll be able to join us for that same time next Tuesday. Um, thank Thanks again, Amy, and thanks to everyone for joining us. Thanks, Bye. Bye.